Hi, thank you very much for being here. Uh, my name is Jane Peterson. I'm a second year MPP student here at the Kennedy School. Um, and I wanted to ask, since the last time you've been here was in 2016, I wanted to ask a question about your job as a White House spokesperson. Uh, in that role, you said things that were often pretty audacious, often cause people to question things that they have seen with their own eyes. Um, and so I'm curious in that role, I was always wondering whether it was a survival response in what seemed like it was a very chaotic White House, or was it a strategy? So was it strategy or was it survival? You know, all the bantering with journalists, the alternative facts, was it strategy or was it survival? Harvard student gets schooled by Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne Conway, a former senior advisor to President Trump, didn't hold back when a Harvard student hit her with a bold question. The response? Let's just say it was unforgettable. Let's dive into the clip and I'll share my thoughts along the way. Do you know what alternative facts meant? I'm aware. But can you please explain it for us? So tell the person who uttered it on her third Sunday show of the day looking into a blank camera and then immediately said what I meant. Well, we could also do other examples. I mean, the... Uh, no, no, I, no, you can answer the question, though. You have to be fair. You're not going to, you're not going to go back eight years and do that. Well, I asked you a question about your role in the no, no, White House. No, no, you gave me two so choices. Actually, it would be at least you gave me two ago. choices, and they're both inaccurate. So alternative facts, I'm assuming, mean... Oh, you're assuming. Go ahead. I've talked about it in the many interviews. So I wrote a whole book about it's it. It's interesting that you decide to come here and know that you're going to be accepting questions from students, and yet... Okay, so then I'll answer it. Thank you for your question. Um, I gave you a good chance there, and it's a great chance for you because I don't need any more airtime. I get plenty of it. So um, I think your choices were survivor's response, that's rich, um, or since you know nothing about me, or banter, what was it? Something else silly. I said uh, strategy, strategy or survival. Strategy. Not survival's um, response. How about trying to, first of all, my job was counselor to the president. I said no to press secretary 42 minutes after President Trump was elected, he offered me that job. Um, he said, you'd be great at that. I said, I would be terrible at that. I'm not even sure what they do. Um, some days I'm still not sure. I clearly am not sure after these four years. Uh, the border's secure. President Biden is behind the scenes. He's a trapeze artist and a triathlete. You just can't see it. So I hope you take these same concerns to the people who have lied to your face for four years in this administration all the way to this crushing defeat of a sitting vice president who, should, who could have been the first female president of color in our nation's history, but instead had to eat and own all the lies that had been told by this administration. Alternative facts was very simple. If you're enjoying the content, a quick thumbs up goes a long way in helping share these videos with more people. And if you've been here before but haven't subscribed yet, I'd love to earn your subscription with this one. It was, I meant to say alternative information, additional facts. It wasn't George Orwell. It wasn't a new set of facts. And you can read my whole book. There's a whole chapter about it where I explain it. Um, I don't defend it myself. I explain it. And if you want to be judged by two words in your life, um, it'll, it'll take me, it wouldn't take me much time to find those two words. But I don't do that. I don't look at people that way. Said, I think we're going to have to go a little bit more deeper, more deeply than um, me giving some advice on how to f people find common ground. I'm very proud that I was able to tell people what was going on in the White House, what the Tax Cut and Jobs Act meant to them, that we had over 100 corporate incursions, that we had co U.S. companies legally parked overseas, that since then we've had $2.5 trillion of wealth repatriated this country, that corporations did invest in their in their research and inventory in their workforce. I just had lunch yesterday with a woman in D.C. who told me her company raised the minimum wage to $20 the minute that passed. It goes on and on. I'm very happy to have told the country that I work for the president. Seven promised, seven promised to do it, only one did. Seven presidents promised to move the embassy to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. One did it. Give back the Golan Heights, save, um, sign the Abraham Accords. Very happy to announce a lot of trade deals. So um, here's what I do. I look at the full measure of people. And if the idea is to try to cut them down 
from one thing they said or one bad day they had or one article they wrote, um, then I wish you a much happier life. Share your thoughts. Do you agree or have a different perspective? Let me know what you think. Then all that. So I don't have an answer to a question that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, except to say you can read my book about alternative facts. You can um, listen to the many interviews I've given about. It was never actually a different set of facts. Um, and that's, that's pretty obvious. So, and I will say this. Um, you go back to 2016. The media, who I guess just has a whole living of getting the elections wrong, on that they're consistent. They... Um, they couldn't get enough of Donald Trump and Kellyanne Conway during the election. Every show, every minute, every. So I'm well on the record as saying which vote, which states he was going to win, how he was going to win in 2016, where he was going to win. And then he won, and people changed. They turned like that. Just when we need the media's help to tell the country what's going on to co-parent the White House and the mainstream media to, to responsibly co-parent the country for four to eight years. Instead, they turn out to be a lot of deadbeat dads interested in not getting the story but getting the president and tearing us down. And I'll go back and look at it. But they have a horrible record. I mean, Kamala Harris is winning Iowa by four points, three points. Trump wins it by 13. That's just election interference. So, next. Let's be honest. When we call them students, they're adults. Sure, none of us had everything figured out in our early 20s, but here's the kicker. This person is at one of the world's top schools. There was a time when just being accepted into a place like Harvard meant you were among the best and brightest. Employers would see that name on a resume and immediately know they were hiring someone exceptional. But now, that reputation doesn't hold the same weight. The education system seems more focused on pushing agendas than teaching real-world skills. Graduates come out with a deep understanding of buzzwords and talking points, but struggle to think critically. It's like someone learning about the latest social trends instead of gaining actual knowledge that makes a difference in the workplace. If all you're doing is memorizing concepts without questioning or analyzing them, what's the point of an elite education? Think of it like watching cooking videos all day, but never stepping into the kitchen. You can talk about recipes, but can you actually cook? Harvard and other institutions need to get back to teaching how to think, not what to think. And while I appreciated her attempt to give credit where it's due, let's be real. There are people out there far more qualified for leadership than some of the names being propped up. It's time for a serious reset in education. If you like this take, hit the like button, the like button, subscribe, and stick around for more. See you in the next one.